So when we set these equal to each other and solve, we're going to get x to the cubed minus x squared minus x is equal to 0. So we factor out an x, leaving me x squared minus x minus 1 is equal to 0. And unfortunately, this does not factor nicely, so we have to throw this into the quadratic. And so we know that when x is equal to 0, that's from this one, which is also this. So that is at the origin. So we have our first one. And then we take a look at the other points of intersection. So we have to use a quadratic formula. So we're going to use negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So my other points of intersection is negative negative 1. So that's going to be positive 1 plus or minus negative b squared minus 4 a c all over 2a so this is going to be 1 plus or minus 1 plus 4 over 2 which is going to be 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2 so we're going to have two points of intersection this point of intersection on this part is going to be 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2 and this part is going to be 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. So now we're going to integrate this. So I'm going to ask before I integrate, is there any questions for me before I do the integration? So if there's no, no questions, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and erase this so I can give myself some space to do the integration. Now. I have the graph here, which does help. If I didn't have the graph here, I, I could do it by figuring out where this intersects and determine who's above and below at that point. Or I can, I can just go and do a quick graph. So my integration is my a to b of the absolute value of f of x minus g of x dx is... I need to determine who is above and below. So my first part is from, this is this region right here. It is from one minus the square root of five over two to zero. In this region, my x cubed is above. So it's x cubed minus. And then my x squared plus three or plus x is below in that region and then I would add to it the integration of 0 to 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 and now x squared plus x is above and then minus x cubed because that is below dx So go ahead and do the integrations, and you'll probably want to do a decimal equivalent. Go ahead and do a decimal equivalent on, on these to maybe three decimals. So the 1 minus the 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. Do that at about three decimal places. So go ahead and finish those integrations. Looks like we have a couple of confirmations on answers. So when we integrate this, when we're going from negative uh, 1 minus, so it's, it's going to be a negative number, 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2, um, to 0, then I'm going to get some number, and then to that I'm going to add my other number, and I end up with 1.0833. So that's the final answer. Did anyone get anything different than that? Okay, so let's take a look at our next example here, where I've got the 12 <coughs> minus x, uh, and y equals the square root of x and y equals 1. So they're not giving me my limits of integration. That means I must have some sort of crossovers between these values. So I can graph these by hand. I may not be able to get a really good idea of it, but we'll give it a, a go. So here's the square root of x. And it's going to go through the point 1 comma 1. I have the line y equals 1, so there's this line, y equals 1. 
And then I also have this point, which is the 12 minus x. So it's going to go through a positive 12. And then it's going gonna, it's gonna to come down with a negative slope. So it's going to cross at negative 12. So my graph isn't very good. So let's go over to Desmos and take a look at what this would look like. Because I'm not going to... My graph isn't going to tell me much because my 12 minus x is so much larger than the way I scaled it. So let's go to Desmos. So here's my graph. With this graph, I'm going to integrate in different places. So my first point of integration is I'm going to start with this x value where x is equal to 1. And then I'm going to end right here where x is equal to 9. And I'm going to integrate first this portion, just this portion. In this portion, who is the function on the top? So my green is the square root of x, my blue is 12 minus x, and my red is y is equal to 1. So in that first shaded region that I have, who is the function on the top? Is it the square root? Is it 1? Or is it 12 minus x? It's the green one. It is the square root of x. So my first integration that I'm going to do is between 1 and 9. And the function that is on the top is the square root of x minus the function that's on the bottom is just 1 dx. Then I'm going to do the second graph. I'm going to do that second one there, and this is crossing at 11. So when I put this through my calculator, I got 11 and 1 third, or actually what my calculator gave me is 11.3 repeating. Would anybody like to go over that one since I've got a couple of different, okay, cool. Found the error, cool. Okay, so with that said, I would like you to try C, and you may need to go into Desmos. This one is one I could probably draw the graph for without going into Desmos. So we're going from negative pi to pi. So I'm asked to find the integration here. Now, my sine wave is going to look something like this from negative pi to pi. So there's my sine wave. That's sine, so y equals sine of x. And then my cosine wave is going to look something like this. Actually, it's going to look something like this. So there's my cosine wave. And so with my cosine wave, I've got to find those points of intersection. The points of intersection for these are at the pi over 4 and the negative pi over 4. So these will intersect, and that's because it's the place in which we have the exact same output for sine and cosine is at pi over 4. So at pi over 4, we have the exact same output. And then over here, we get negative pi over 4. And so in those two places, there is my intersection. And again, 
if I wasn't sure I could go to decimal, so let's go to decimal. So here's my graph, and I'm going to go from negative pi to negative 3 pi over 4. And it's going to be in this first region in black. The one that's going to be above is the sine, so it'll be the sine x minus the cosine x. And then plus, it's going to go from negative 3 pi over 4 to pi over 4. And then in this region, my cosine will be above. And then my last region is going to be from pi over 4 to pi. And the one that's going to be above is the sine this time again. So sine x, then minus the cosine x, dx. These are all dx. Okay, so we have three pieces there. So I, want, I don't like to do a lot of work. I don't know about you all, but I'm not fond of doing a lot of work. What I notice is that with this particular graph, I have some symmetry here. So if I move this black piece over here, then that would have matched. And then what looks like is that this matches this shape here. To see how those match in shape, if I move that, that little black piece over to the other side, I have a match. Because I have a match, I have the shapes match, I can integrate this once and then just multiply the answer by two and be done with it. So I could integrate this. I can do this part here, integration. And so it would be the integral from negative 3 pi over 4 to pi over 4 multiply that by 2 and then who would be on the top is the cosine so it would be the cosine of x minus the sine of x dx or I could do this one if I'm like yeah I want to stay with the positive cool then you could have just done this one you would have done 2 the integral from pi over 4 to uh, let me see that should be 5 pi over 4 and in this case, my sine is above, sine x minus cosine x dx. So I could have totally done it by multiplying it by realizing I have symmetry and the shapes are the same and just doing one integration. We should get the same answer. So go ahead and finish that off, please, and tell me what you get for an answer. And again, you can do it by the three pieces, which is totally fine, or you can do it by one piece, multiply it by two, because we have the symmetry, the same shape. Totally up to you. And then tell me what you get in your answer box, please. Then, So we're going to go ahead and put in a two as the multiplier. So two, I'm going to do the cosine of five pi over four. So it's going to be minus a negative uh, square root of two over two, because it's down in that lower region, so it is a minus, and then it's going to be minus the sine, so a minus a negative square root of 2 over 2, it's also a negative. And then that is just taking care of the upper region, so this is the cosine, negative cosine of 5 pi over 4, and then minus the sine of 5 pi over 4. And then I'm going to subtract off 2 times the negative cosine of pi over 4, which is going to be minus 2, the square root of 2 over 2, and then minus the sine of pi over 4, which is the square root of 2 over 2. And what this represents is minus the cosine of pi over 4 minus the sine of pi over 4. And so what I'll have then is in this first grouping, I'm going to get 2 times, and I have a negative negative. So it becomes a square root of 2 over 2 and plus the square root of 2 over 2. And then minus 2. This becomes a negative square root 2 
over to, I'm going to have two of them, so I'm just going to do it that way. And then, so what will happen then is I'm going to get 2, the square root of 2 over 2, plus 2 times, and that should be 2, the square root of 2. And then it's going to be plus 2 root 2 over 2. And i got a bunch of 2's. Those cancel, leaving me just 2 root 2 plus 2 root 2, which gives me 4 root 2 which I don't know what that is without my calculator. What kind of questions do you have for me? When we do it with respect to the y-axis, then we care about who is left and who is right. And we're going to now do it with 2dy. And so instead of doing it with respect to x, it's going to be with respect to y, so it is dy. And in this case, our values that we put in for our b and our, our d and our c are the y values. So these are not x values, these are the y values that are associated to where these lines cross. So if we're asked to do the graph with respect to the y-axis, the reason we're doing this area with respect to the y-axis is because where we're moving toward is toward finding volumes. And we've got to, when we find volumes, we've got to be comfortable with, it, with doing derivatives with respect to x or with respect to y. Because when we're doing a volume, there's going to be times in which it's going to be better to do it with respect to x. And there's going to be times when it's going to be better to do it with respect to y. So we have to get comfortable and familiar with doing them both ways. Most of the time, though, we're going to be with respect to x, but we need to have that fluid with from x to y and y to x. So in this case, when I'm asked to do the derivative with respect to y, then I need these y values here and here. So I need to figure out where these cross, the y values that that happens, not the x values. So I do the same thing as I did before where I said, oh, my y's are the same, so I can set these equal. My x's are the same, so I set these equal. So now I have 9 is equal to y squared. I am wanting the y values, not the x values. So then when I solve for y, I'm going to get positive and negative 3 is my y value. So I think of this almost like turning this. And when I, when I think about this and turning it is now this is my x straight up. If it helps me, because I am dyslexic and I have to see it differently. And this is my y. So this is what it looks like when it's turned on its side. If you think about taking this and turning it on its side. Now, it looks just like when we're integrating with respect to x. I'm going to go from negative 3 to 3. When I am doing it with respect to y, I ask myself, who do I see first? Well, the value I see first is the y squared. So I think of that as my bottom function. Who's the last one I see as I read left to right? In this case, the last function I see is 9. So I think of that as my, quote, top function. So when I'm doing this integration with respect to y, negative 3 to 3, instead of reading from left to right on my graph when I'm doing it with respect to x, I start with the very bottom and then I go to the top. I, so it's a negative 3 to 3, so those are my limits. My upper function is 9, my lower function is y squared, dy. So go ahead and finish that off and tell me what you get for an area. So when we do this integration, we end up with 36 is the answer. Does anyone want to go over that one? I've got several confirmations at 36. Does anyone want to go over that one at all? Are we okay? Are we cool? Not cool? Doing okay? Not okay? Okay, so let's do one more. And for this one, I am integrating with respect to the y-axis again. Now, if I wasn't told, I probably would do it with respect to the x-axis and just solve for y. But this case, we want us to solve for x and we want to do it with respect to the x-axis. So if I don't have it graphed, Again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these equal to each other, and so I get y squared minus y, or is y squared is equal to y, excuse me, 
And so I set these equal to each other to figure out where they cross. And so I get y squared minus y is equal to zero. Factoring out a y, I get y minus one is equal to zero. So when y equals zero, this is my lower bound. And when y equals one, that is my upper bound. Again, if I didn't know which one, if I didn't have a graph, then I would figure out where they cross, if they cross, in this case they do. And then I'd have to determine who is above or below in that region. So I'd actually have to do a value for x. So I would choose a value for y and figure out which one is the larger one. So just like we would solve, choose a value for x, as I would choose a value for y and, and solve for x. So I'd choose a value within that region between 1 and 0 between 0 and 1. So I'd say, okay, let's choose y is equal to 0.5. And then I'd have to determine who's the larger number. So I put in 0.5. And so for this one, y equals 0.5. And then for this one, if I put in 0.5, so I get x is equal to 0.5 for the first one. And x is equal to 0.5 squared for the second one. In this case, 0.5 is larger than 0.25. So I know that this one, y is equal to x, is the one that is on the top, as I want to think about it as the top, or it is the one that is the most to the right. So when I do this integration between 0 and 1, it is my top function, which is the last one I see, which is y, minus the bottom function, or the first one I see, which is y squared dy. So on this one, we are looking for who is the first function I see and who is the last function I see. So if I don't have the graph available to me, I can always do it by figuring out where they cross and then figure out who is first and who is second. Who is the bottom function? Who do I read first and who do I read second? Well, because 0.5 is the larger number, that means this is the last one I'm going to see. So that is the most right function. So that is what I consider my upper one, my top function. So go ahead and finish that off and tell me what you get for an answer. We have some confirmations of 1 sixth. Would anyone like to go over that? Confirmation of 1 sixth. Anyone want to go over that? Okay. So I just want to do one more example and then we pretty much have this one done. Is this one I'm not going to graph it. So for this one on C, I'm not going to graph this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to determine where we have crossing points, just like we did before, and who do I see first and who do I see second without graphing it. So I'm going to find where we cross by setting these equal. So y cubed minus y is equal to 2y. And now I'm going to go ahead and subtract the 2y from both sides. So I get y cubed minus 3y is equal to 0. I'm going to factor out a y, leaving me y minus 3, y squared minus 3 is equal to 0. So the two places that I'm crossing is at y equals 0 and at y is equal to plus and minus the square root of 3. So for this, it looks like I'm going to actually have a couple of places, more than one, in which I'm going to cross. In fact, more than two. I have three places in which I cross. So I'd have to determine where which one is above the other without doing the graph. So I'd have to choose in the region for my y values, now remember, my y values start at the negative square root of 3, 0, and the square root of 3. So in this region, I'm trying to decide who is the bottom function and who is the top function. So I would choose some value in here, say, oh, let's do the square root of 2. And I would put the square root of 2 into each one of these. I'd put it in here, and I'd put it in here. So x is equal to 2, the square root of 2. And I decide what that value is. And x is equal to the square root of 2 cubed minus the square root of 2. And I try to determine who is the larger function. So I'd get my calculator out. And again, this is if I couldn't graph this in Desmos. So I'd do 2, the square root of 2, which is approximately equal to 2.82. And then I would do um, two, the square root of 2 cubed, and then minus the square root of 2. If 
I can put this in right so it is 2 the square root of 2 cubed and then minus the square root of 2 so this one is approximately so for this one is approximately the 2.82 and then this one is approximately equal to 1.41. So in the, this region, so I'm doing the first integral between negative, negative square root of three and zero. The first one I see is I read from left to right. Again, if I didn't have the ability to graph this, the first one I would see from reading from left to right is this one. And then the second one I'd see is the two y. So the two y would be considered on top. So it would be 2y minus y cubed minus y dy. And then I'd have to do the same thing, but now I would use the uh, positive. Oh, I guess those should have been negative. Ah, sons of guns. So those should have been negative, so that might change it. It probably will change it. So I should have been evaluating these at... Should have been evaluating these. Oh, cat, stop keeps giving me its toy and then it's attacking my leg because I won't play with its toy. I'm not liking that. This is the woes of working from home is cats. And yes, it should be the negative square root. And so I would choose, again, I would choose the negative square root of two and I would check to see which one's on the top and the bottom. So let's just do that really fast. I apologize for taking up your time. I guess I should have done the first one. So X is going to be equal to, for this first one, is going to be a negative and then it'll be a negative 2.8, negative 2.8 approximately. And then for the second one, again, I'm using negative square root of 2. And so x is going to be equal to the negative square root of 2, the quantity cubed, minus the square root of negative, minus the negative square root of 2. Holy crap. And so that is going to be... negative 1.4 negative 1.4 and so the first one I'm actually going to see is this 2y so this integration between 0 between negative square root of 3 and 0 the first one I'm going to see as I read from left to right is actually going to be the 2y so that means it must be y cubed minus y minus the second one or the first one I see which is the 2y dy. And then I'd have to do it for the other part, and I'd have to put in the positive square root of 2. And we know from the positive square root of 2, so it would have been plus, because that's what I did first by mistake. So from 0 to the square root of 3, this would have been 2y minus y cubed minus y dy. All right, so thank you for holding on that. Or you can just graph these in Desmos, but if you didn't have the ability to graph in Desmos, that's how you would do it, is you would figure out where they cross and then determine who is first and who is second, reading from left to right. So that's how we integrate with respect to y. And then if you're not told which way to, to um, integrate, then you get a decide which one is the easiest. So you do need to get fluid with integrating with respect to y or x, but if it doesn't say, then you get to make that decision. Now, if I take a look at a, I'm probably going to do it with respect to x, but I take a look at b, I'm probably going to do it with respect to y because it's already solved for x. And then I take a look at c, well, the solving for x or y isn't going to be any different. So with c, I'd probably do it with respect to the x-axis. And on D, definitely the x-axis. On E, I may actually do it with respect to y and, and do it with the cosine of y is equal to x and the sine of y is equal to x. So I may do it in, in with respect to the y-axis. So it's really going to be up to you if it doesn't tell you and it's the easiest way for you as you see it. The way I see it and the way you see it may not be the same thing. 
So get fluid with both of them. And this pretty much does 2.1. When I see you all tomorrow, if I don't see you later in office hour, then we will pick up 2.2 tomorrow. Have a great day. Hopefully this weather will clear up and we'll have a nice sunny day this afternoon. Thank you for waiting and staying a little bit longer. Thank you.